when we think about blockchains, what we're trying to do is trying to reach consensus. So that's just agreement. But to reach agreement, we have to talk one or more times so that we can be like, yeah, we're all on the same page because what we're trying to do is update a database. We all sort of have to update this in sequence. Um, and the limitation to being able to come into agreement is how many times do we have to talk and how long it takes for us to talk. So in this room with two people, it's very simple. Speed of sound is you know uh, 300 meters per second in air, so you're a meter apart. So uh, three microseconds or whatever it is later, mm -hmm. like you hear me and we can go back and forth. So say six microseconds plus your response time, maybe it's a second. So one second and six microseconds later, we can agree on something, Yeah. right? Uh, if we extend that to a global network, what ends up happening when we have many nodes is we have the time between the nodes, which is the ping. Um, so how long it takes the information to go from one point to another, just like because of physics of the wires. And then we have the number of those hops. So in something like Bitcoin, if you have 10,000 nodes, um, you might need to do seven hops to get around the network. And the average ping time might be 100, 150 milliseconds. So it's gonna take you one or more seconds for a message to sort of traverse through the nodes on average. Um, and that's just like one way. Then mm -hmm. if I like wanna come back with another message, it's gonna be another second to second and a half. And so this limitation in propagation is like what creates the boundary of how quickly we can agree on something. And the shorter you make block times and the bigger you make blocks, the more important that gets. So if we look at a global network and we say we're not looking at Bitcoin anymore, say we take it down to Ethereum and we do 10 second blocks instead of 10 minute blocks. If it takes me a second and a half just to propagate a block in the network, that means during that time, other people in the network are still mining. So they're gonna produce a block that competes with my block so it creates contention. So we're no longer in agreement just by the nature of the mining process in that one and a half seconds. And the likelihood of that happening is the one and a half seconds relative to the block time, 10 seconds. So 15% of the time, there will be an uncle block or like a orphan block that's mm. made that then has to get resolved after the fact, right? And the bigger those blocks are and the shorter the block times are, and the longer it takes to process, the worse that parameter gets. And that's sort of the limitation to scale and throughput is, is sort of the, the first one, mm -hmm. which is how long does it take us to talk? How many rounds of conversations do we have to agree? Mm -hmm. Or reach consensus. Or reach consensus. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is, how do you improve that bandwidth? And the way that you do that, this isn't like a that magical of a problem independently, it's just a subnet. So if I shrink the number of nodes, and I shrink the distance between nodes, I can shrink the number of hops and I can shrink the ping time so that I can talk faster. If I can talk faster, we can agree faster. If I can agree faster, I can push more blocks through the blockchain, more transactions through the blocks. Very, very straightforward. Now, the problem that we have with that is I've just created like a subnet, but if I'm like creating a subnet, how do I make it so this is a global system? So we come into a partitioning problem, which is if I have many subnets, these subnets still have to eventually agree with each other mm. And then the other problem is, ideally, this is only helpful if the subnets are agreeing on state independently of the other subnets. So once you introduce subnets, you have to introduce shards, right? And a shard means we're, we're going to make an agreement on what state we process. So this is also like a well-known engineering mechanism, mm -hmm. right? If I want to scale a database, I shard it. So an uh, example would be in Facebook, right? Um, you know, A through M will go in this shard and uh, N through Z will go in that shard, right? So you have sort of two replications, and then when you get a query, like by last name, like you'll either go here or you'll go there. But then what can happen is each one of these can operate sort of independently of each other just by sort of how you route. So like sharding is a known mechanism to scale. Now, the third thing that makes this hard though is you have the consensus mechanism, which in this case was proof of work. Mm -hmm. So the sort of key concept of the unlock was that you could do merge mining in a hierarchy of chains, which would allow you to both create subnets and create shards while not sharding the work, meaning everybody is still eventually making the same worked commitments to the same set of transactions, but eventually. So it basically lets us uh, stretch our consensus in time so it percolates up in the shards and the subnets until there's sort of a global consensus.